Hello. Welcome. <laughs> this <laughs> is the Value Art Podcast. The working title, at least. We're, we're working on a better one. Um, this is the first episode. We are moving really quickly and uh, things are a little, a little disorganized and uh, chaotic, but I think it's good. I think it's fun and um, we're excited, most importantly. Um, my name is Eddie. This is my co-host, Izzy. And uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be the creative team behind this podcast indefinitely, um, as long as they'll have us. Uh, and it's a and it's an exciting opportunity for both of us. Um, so uh, I I'll just start with uh, introducing myself. I guess my name is Eddie Contento. I I spent about nine nine and a half years running the design side of a software agency uh, based out of Philadelphia. I also have a background in film, so I've transitioned within the last four or five years to focusing on filmmaking full time. And I have quite a bit of experience in just the digital media sector. Uh, so my my interests really lie in in that world. But having this sort of ba this combination background of technology and uh, and storytelling, um, I find myself in a really cool position to want to learn about both sides of it. So this podcast, which we'll get into a little bit more uh, after uh, Izzy introduces herself, will allow, will allow us to do that. So, but yeah, that's a little bit about, about me. What, what about you, Izzy? Who are you? Explain, because yeah. we, we're still getting to know you. <laughs> Absolutely. So my name's actually Isabella, but I go by Izzy. Um, I have a background in languages. In fact, I know four languages. I know Italian, English, German, Spanish, and I'm trying to learn um, French at the moment. <laughs> it's taking a while. Um, uh, over the last year, I've actually been, became very passionate about virtual events. And that brought me to be passionate also about the crypto and NFT world. And I can't wait to, to be part of this. Cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I think you have more of a, you come from the perspective of like the technology side or like, That's I feel it. like based on our discussions that your, mm -hmm. your enthusiasm lies more in the technology side. And I think for me, my enthusiasm definitely lies more in the, the art and philosophical and conceptual side. So I think we'll, we'll do a good job of balancing <laughs> each other out in that. And like, even when we were getting to know each other over the last week, the, some of the stuff you were sharing with me, like some of the links you were sharing su were super cool. Uh, some Somewhat dystopian stuff, but like I think that's just the nature of the technologies. Um, and maybe that's just my my habit of automatically assuming like this could be very dystopian. But, uh, but it's really cool. And um, I hope that I can also uh, reciprocate and share some of some interesting things from the other side uh, with you and, and with our audience. That's actually a quote. Like, um, I love reading tech books. Uh, so that could actually be a chapter. Like I could be suggesting books <laughs> just like I, I've been doing with you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a good that's a good segue to mention, like, we're really trying to figure out the mm -hmm. format and uh, and flow of these episodes. So um, this first one is pretty freestyled. Like we we've done the intro of this at least a hundred times, and that's <laughs> mostly on me. But um, it's because we're we're trying to figure it out, you know. So um, if anybody watching, assuming there's anybody watching, uh, has any interest in pitching uh, topics or or things for us to explore, um, I'll I'll just talk a little bit about what I'm curious to to learn through this opportunity. So as far as digital art goes, I think. A topic that always comes up uh, that's sort of gray and ambiguous to me uh, is ownership, like intellectual property. I think copyright mm -hmm. is really Absolutely. It's such a strange thing in digital art when you can distribute things infinitely. And with the with the evolution of the blockchain, which I, I know a little bit about, but I'm not super well versed in and I'm not really familiar with the with the emerging like apps or companies that are trying to address these things. So I think it would be cool a, a goal for us in in future episodes, which we're, we're starting to plan is to bring on an expert in in copyright in IP guests like that um, are going to be 
frequent. Like we're gonna we're gonna bring in experts because like as a disclaimer, neither of us, Izzy or I, are experts in either side of this, but we are very curious. And so I think we're gonna try to fill out the episodes with the knowledge. We're gonna try to learn together essentially. Absolutely. So that's exciting. What are some of the other topics that you maybe are interested in touching on with this? Because I know we've addressed we've we've talked about a few. Like I think for me provenance is also another thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd I'd love to see it also from a collector's standpoint how that's changing um of course you know from the traditional art how that already is and the future of it um with nfts so that's going to be an interesting point and overall how this technology is really expanding in all spheres right of course we're going to be focusing on art but i'd love to see it like in all spheres uh so how it's getting into sports but also gaming um for me it's absolutely (laughs) mind-blowing so i'm curious do you do you own any digital art any nfts i i do actually um so i have a few from pokemon (laughs) okay cool uh they're pretty i'd love to share them right now Um, what made you choose uh pokemon uh nfts well i mean i guess of course they're not like the Pokemon, oh. like the, you know, the Pokemon, Pokemon, yeah, right. Like Pokemon. Um, they're not like the original ones, but like when I was little, I used to like collect them all the time. Um, so then I was just mind blowing and they were cute. So <laughs> I was like, man, these, I gotta have one of these. Uh, there were many other others that I was looking at and I'm still having a look at. And man, I, I kind of like lost the train for many. Because whereas months ago they didn't cost much, they're already out of reach, like insane prices. So, you know, um, really, yeah, mostly. So you have to give up a few Ethereum's and a few. Sorry, a few. Uh, even more than a few <laughs> for some. So wow. I'm I'm more of the like um, I invest in crypto, so I'm more of the hodling uh, philosophy. So for me to sometimes you know give up my crypto. It's it's kind of hard. So definitely, I lost a yeah. for a lot of NFTs uh, when the price was better. Yeah. But I'm definitely gonna buy more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about you? I don't have any NFTs. I do have some crypto, but I've I've I purchased for like uh, with the intention of just sitting on it for like years. Like I don't I'm not looking at it. I'm not thinking about it. That's okay. Yeah, because I also don't have, I don't have the stomach for it. Like, it's too much every day to like, see, it's so volatile. You know, I don't, I don't like feeling, I'm not a day trader, you know, it's not my thing. I can't. And that's why I I think you have to see it like, um, in a long term perspective. And there's so many people that are missing out on this. It's absurd, insane. So you're doing it right. The the hodling life. That's the thing (laughs) I thought. I thought like in 2016, in the first bubble, like I I had the intention of buying some, I think in the beginning of the year, but I didn't. And then there was that like crazy spike. And then I was like, oh, it's too late now. Like I'm definitely way, I've missed the boat. Like I'm, I'm, there's no point now. And then of course, like how many people had the same regret not buying it at that point? Oh boy. And now they're a lot. Yeah. So just like also yeah. the last crash, right? Um, a lot of people sold because they, they just panicked and they're going to pretty much regret that. Um, so, yeah. hodl. <laughs> don't, don't Can you actually explain a little bit, like, just really briefly, because there's, like, a, a million resources on, like, what NFTs are, but can you just, like, high level tell me what your idea of it is? Yeah. So, not, you know, NFT stands for non-fungible token, which gives the concept of it being unique since it's not it's not replaceable, right? Most NFTs they are on the Ethereum blockchain, and NFTs can be pretty much anything at the moment, art, but also you're getting into the um, music industry, uh, movies, and sports. There, it's it's incredible. What I like most about it because it's just how art works, right? Like yeah. art, you're not necessarily buying the piece, but you're buying the concept or the idea exactly. and the bragging rights to the piece. In digital art, you don't really have the luxury of exclusivity because people can just re- recreate your work and share it and whatever. This is super exciting for for artists to be able to take control over their work and to be able to like distribute it how they want, whether it's in sets or whether it's like a, a one-off piece and to 
clearly validate a piece like to authenticate a piece as like the one you know even if you have like some shitty digital version of it you you have proof one person has proof or one of 100 people have proof that they own a piece of this which i think is so exciting because as so so i invest i i shouldn't say invest i support mm -hmm. uh creators on patreon and i love patreon because it, it it does give you a little bit of a little bit more value than just like straight up donating to someone's mm -hmm. venmo or something because you get like perks back right people people will make things for you there will be like exclusive content but what's nice about nfts is it's like patronage but you have the benefit of also owning something unique, you know? So like you're still supporting an artist that you love, but you're getting something out that could return on your investment later on, which is super fucking cool. Absolutely. And I love the fact, I, I think that it gives so many opportunity, opportunities, especially to emerging artists, just gives them the chance to really get into the world and earn. Because let's, let's, let's just say it, you know, being an artist can be hard to also earn money um, unless you get like, super famous immediately um here it really gives you the opportunity to to do that it's weird because like i i think that there's this divide in in artists that are more traditional or maybe mm -hmm. just make physical works like i have a couple of close friends that do like murals or, or or like canvas work or uh even like uh like ceramics right and a few of them have have voiced their grievances about this and i think they feel as if it cheapens the work because mm -hmm. they're not really going into they're, they're not really delving into the benefits of it and and how it's it augments the work rather than than I taking agree. away from the physical piece you know and I, I think that it would be cool to talk to some we should have some people on that are that are on both sides of it like I agree. like artists that are absolutely against digital yeah. the blockchain uh, there are these and then artists that are yeah, for sure, for sure. Also, what you're seeing is like this. There's this influx of people that are that are trying to capitalize, like people that are, are artists now that weren't artists before the the NFT boom. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> just like um, all the altcoins, right? Um, there were a lot that came out <laughs> all together. Then you know the best projects, they they stay strong, they win. Uh, that's gonna be the same in an NFT world too. Um, definitely in this period, there's a lot, but you're going to already see, I think, even a year from now that only the serious ones are going to be there. Yeah. But and as a collector in that like really low tier space, like yeah. if you're looking, if you're getting a piece of art from somebody who's nobody now, like be and super cheap or whatever, and you're maybe you're supporting them or maybe you're just sort of like hedging your bets. But mm -hmm. either way, you have this opportunity to get something so early on so young that in 10 20 years could be in, insanely valuable you know insanely valuable. i agree so um let's talk a little bit about what value art is as a platform Absolutely. and uh and then maybe we can talk about who our who our guest is because we're going to have an exciting guest <laughs> on in a, in a moment so value art is a platform to mint sell buy and uh, curate nfts with the focus on curation i think we're in the beginning we're working with artists with collectors to take physical works, iconic physical works, like really memorable works, and to digitize them and list them as NFTs on our platform and to basically elevate and expand the reach and the accessibility of these like insanely iconic pieces of art. So um, our first drop, I, I feel like I should have a drum roll sound effect for this. Our <laughs> first drop is gonna be on July 22nd, and the item up for auction is a Banksy, which I, when they reached out to me and they were like, Hey, we're doing this thing and we think you might be interested. And also we're, we're working with, a, with some collectors. Uh, we have some works that I think are, are cool. I was like, Oh, cool. What is it? And they were like, yeah, first you got to sign an NDA. And I was like, to talk to you about it. <laughs> and so then I did. <laughs> and then they told me and I was like, Oh, That's wow. Why. <laughs> so our producer Giorgio was like, I just had a physical Banksy in our studio and we use photogrammetry to make a one-to-one -one model of it. And I'm like, you're saying too many insane things to me at once. You need to slow down. He's like, there was like secret service with the piece. Like they had guards, you know, it was, it was intense. I had like an hour or something like that to do it. And I'm like, whoa, man. So the reason that this is our first piece is because 
our co-founder, uh, Vittorio, he's the owner of the piece. We're going to have our co-founder on in a moment to talk about the first drop, to talk about the piece. Uh, but right now, we'll, we'll just let's talk a little bit about it and what its history is. So the piece is is known as Spike. It is a it is a physical rock. I think from 2003 or 2004 was when the piece was realized. And it was part of a, a treasure hunt. Banksy spent some time in the West Bank doing a like multitude of, of different works, um, mostly focused around like escapism and the conflict and uh, the feeling of getting away of, of freedom. And he juxtaposed the imagery of children and like paradise uh, with the surrounding environment and uh, like putting putting works right on the wall. Like some of his most iconic pieces are in this region. And before leaving, he uh, hacked off a piece of the wall and and wrote a, a word on the underside of this of this piece of, of rock and then like hid it amongst the environment for somebody to find. And like, I, there was a press release that said, like, this is out there. If you find it, you'll get a certification. Mm -hmm. And I think the piece is I think the piece was for the person that found it. I don't actually remember who like what the what the chain of ownership mm -hmm. was with this piece of art. Long story short, our co-founder has this piece of art. He has Spike and he's digitized it with the help of our team. And we're listing it as our first item in our first drop on July 22nd. And it is super exciting. And I have no idea what to expect <laughs> out, of, uh, out of an auction like this. Um, but I think it's really cool. I think it's cool that we're getting these and there will be way more uh, of these sorts of, of drops. So more iconic pieces of physical art digitized and minted into NFTs. So um, I don't really know the full extent of the list of items that they've got planned, but I know that they, they, they've told me that they keep getting more and more, I guess, iconic is the, is the right word. So that's iconic, really cool. Yeah. Um, iconic, definitely. And yeah. Yeah. And so this is just the beginning. Like I think the plan for the platform is to, partner and collaborate with other notable artists um, outside of the backlog that we have and try to build up this network of, of pieces at the same time, giving uh, lesser known artists a platform to share their work alongside of these like insanely like notable pieces. So I think that's, that's a really great opportunity for artists. I'm probably going to list some of my own stuff when the opportunity when we when we actually launch i'm, I'm gonna like maybe i'll make something new or i'll my next nft to buy <laughs> <laughs> oh so sweet thank you so much my first patron um i don't know i don't know what the process is like yet i haven't actually gone through it but maybe we can make that a topic of conversation in the episode in another episode so i think we're gonna have vittorio on the on should be here short the podcast in a moment yeah Hey, there he is. How are you guys? Very good, very good. Very, very excited good. to talk to you. Yeah. Excited. Cool. So, where are you? What is, where are you talking from, Eddie? So I'm in the Netherlands. I'm in Rotterdam specifically. Uh, and Rotterdam. Izzy, you are? I'm in Lido, in Venice, Italy. So, working from here. Ah, oh, Lido di Venezia. Lido di Venezia. Oh. Exactly. And where are you? I am uh, in Ibiza. Oh, nice. Well, awesome. I think we have we have all the same uh, time. Uh, yeah, no? perfect. Yeah, good timing. Yeah, <laughs> you look you look like in the dark side of the moon. Uh, yeah, I have this. I, <laughs> I have a nice little setup here that I'm uh, still figuring it out though. But do you do you prefer? Do you like it? Should I change it? What do you think? Uh, I love it. Nice. I love nice. it. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay, so um, so welcome to the Value Art Podcast, uh, where I'm I'm really excited to to talk to you specifically about the first drop, but also just to get to know you because we've never met before, and uh, um, I've heard your name mentioned in conversation, obviously with the with things as they develop. But um, can you introduce yourself? Explain to us like who you are, your background, and then then we'll talk a little bit more about how Value Art came to be. So first, who who are you? Not, um... I, I am, uh, my name is Vittorio Grigolo and uh, I am uh, an entrepreneur of feelings. I've been in the world of music since I was a little kid. I, I was attracted to everything. I was curious. One of the most beautiful things I would suggest to the people uh, that are watching us, watching Valuart, va why Valuart uh, 
uh, he's here today is because of curiosity. So uh, always uh, be uh, happy to be um, surprised. Yeah, that's exactly what for Izzy and I, like the most exciting part about the podcast is is the chance to grow and to foster our curiosity that's and like yeah. to learn about this space, about digital art, about uh, technology and how those two things interact. So um, that spirit is definitely alive in the value art brand already. And we're excited to like really grow that. Um, so you, at what point did, did your, uh, career, um, open up the doors to you to start getting into art and, and collecting and, and what, when, when did you take an interest in it? Outside of the music world, I always loved to, to paint, uh, to make a, uh, a statue, sculpture. I always used my hand. Uh, so I, I tried really to discover my senses because what is important, what we are losing, uh, I always uh, learned that since uh, the, the uh, introduced, we introduced the computer, the iPhone and the new smartphone, we were uh, losing something. Mm -hmm. So we were getting something, but we were also losing something. I don't see anymore. I'm friend with everybody, but I don't talk to everybody. Ten years ago, when Facebook came in, I said, "I'm your friend in Facebook," but I, I don't know you. I, I, you can have one million friends, but friends is something a word that means a lot. If you say friend, we are friends twenty years ago. It's not like you say friends today. Yeah, you understand what I mean? Yeah. It's my friend. Everybody is your friend, but that's. Let's give a, a value to this world. Yeah. I start to say how I can, I can uh, be more uh, realistic in something that is surreal. How can you bring the energy and the humanity back to the digital? Yeah. I try always to find a, um, a meaning and a feeling. So in connection with this, this new idea, this new world of Valuart and the art, I give you the best example I could to put in relation opera and this new world that we're talking about. So I use uh, one of the greatest aria ever written uh, by Puccini, that is E Lucevan le stelle from Tosca. So this aria starts uh, So E Lucevan le stelle. The light is there, E Lucevan le stelle. Strideva l'uscio nell'orto, olezzava la terra, mi cadea fra le braccia. All the senses, before he's going to death and before going to die, he's uh, uh, saying, oh my God, one hour, in one hour, I'm not going to be able to see again the light of those wonderful stars. I'm not going to be able to hear, uh, hear the door creaking and screeching you know the door of my room i cannot hear the smell of my love i cannot uh, hold her in my arms so he's bringing all the senses so he's bringing on all the senses that he's going to soon lose mm -hmm. so this is what i i always uh, put in relation with the smart world let's use the smart world but let's also don't lose all these incredible feelings this, uh, that are the senses that of course through the phone we cannot uh, um, be able to feel i cannot touch you eddie yeah. but i i can use only you know small things i can see the expression so i can read the eyes you know yeah i think that that's a really cool thing about what we're discussing with this platform merging these this cold digital world with the the pathos of of art and of the humans involved i think that's a really beautiful thing and i'm i'm curious if what are you, what is it like for you now in, in sharing your work with the world and what are some of the pain points? What are some of the areas where you're struggling with uh, in, in sharing yourself, your art with the world? Of course, uh, uh, I mean, if, if you're talking of what uh, we've been living uh, the past two years, uh, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been very difficult for everybody because uh, we had a big reset. Let's call it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, trying to. I did a, a beautiful concert from La Scala with the piano and no public in front of me. Usually, I was going to La Scala was full of people. So you missing all the warm applause. The 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 the, the you hear yeah. the heart beating and the breath of the people. It's not that when you're singing you don't hear them. You feel the energy because if we really believe that the world is a wave, I mean, look at us. We are talking. 
and some waves, waves are reproducing my voice far away to you. It's still for me a miracle uh, when I when I think that I can uh, I can we are surrounded by waves, you know. Yeah, I think that that what you just described of performing to uh, in a in a venue where there would be an audience but there isn't one is so symbolic of what it feels like to make things on the internet. You know, it's like it's everybody's there and listening but you can't feel anybody you know so i think i what it's what's remarkable is your your attitude towards embracing that and and trying to bring the humanity back into it versus being cynical and jaded and being like this sucks i don't want to be a part of it because like you said you're from the old guard of creators and you don't necessarily need to adapt and you don't need to be a part of that evolution but you've decided to embrace it and to improve it and bring the old with the new which i think is really cool but eddie i had the opportunity to sing for 150,000 instead of two and then he arrived to one million uh, during the evening because we were connected live so i i gave the opportunity uh, an old guard school guy that is using opera you that you only can go on the theater alla scala to see there was a lot of people interested because maybe they never been to the opera they wanted to hear it they wanted to so it is true that we are closing some doors but it's also true that we are opening others yeah. so this is very important because at this time if you think it this way I give my message, my love, my will arrive to a million people that, that through the, the chain of the internet and maybe one day not an internet centralized but even decentralized. So I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the piece, about, about the Banksy, about Spike. And I want to first start by asking how you came into possession of it, what was the story behind that, what motivated you to want to buy it? I always uh, I think that my love for heart, uh, knowing that we were going to to be in this technological world, was to collect, uh, to start collecting some pieces that were giving me some emotion. Mm -hmm. But I want to know also who produced that piece of art, what he wanted to say, what he wanted to communicate to the world. For me, uh, Banksy maybe the, the, the first, the greatest street artist that uh, uh, start uh, uh, launching messages, very strong messages to the community, you know, doing this, uh, this funny rats with the, or, or, or the guy that throwing flowers instead of throwing a bomb. So this attracts me, you understand? The, the, the way that how people see the, the, the reality and try to connect uh, and give messages. So I really liked him at the beginning. I didn't know if it would have been famous or not. So this was uh, not an investment uh, done uh, um, for, uh, that's why I want to come back to Valuart. It's not, uh, we are not, uh, Valuart is not here to uh, speculate. Right. It's not, uh, we don't want to follow a trend, a curve. The, it's not, we're not talking about uh, uh, stock market here. Yeah. We're not investing on a piece of art because we wanted to sell it again. We want to keep the value. Of course, we want to invest in something that we know that one day my value, my feelings and my emotion are, and my money are, are there. But I know that this uh, is something that is not, uh, you, you cannot pay. Those feelings, uh, those emotions uh, are, um, are, there are no value. They are incredibly valuable. I think it's really important to stress that because even when I was first approached for the opportunity to work together, I was cynical because I felt like it's a capitalist idea of just pouncing on a trend, you know, just trying to take advantage of a trend. And I don't like that feeling. I, as, as an artist, I don't want to, I don't want to diminish the value of the art, which is exactly why when it was communicated to me, what you just said, how how to elevate it, how to be doing something sustainable and something with substance, it was really exciting because it's the opposite. It, it addressed all, all my concerns. And I think that's that's a really beautiful endeavor. But I'm, I'm curious how that, how the spike piece and how the first drop, how the drops in general relate to that mission for you. Valuart now in the future drops, you will see how Valuart is connecting the world, the real world into the, the digitalized world and how big are these drops in terms of uh, histo history, in terms of value, of feelings, uh, what we are talking today. So it's not only a picture that I do with my phone and I put it on a, on a platform to sell this NFT, okay, to, became, to put it into the big 
big uh, uh, big encyclopedia that is the that is the blockchain uh, and sell it here we are keeping the value of what is the greatest masterpiece ever like this stone we're talking we want to ensure with value art so i want to keep again repeating value art is a, a big insurance policy to keep uh, those feelings uh, and those emotions with the drop. So that's why the drop is taking care of everything. It's like something so special when it's coming out. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you know, because the drop also is very sensible. The first drop is something that we thought about because um, I didn't, uh, I don't have a foundation, but we're thinking with Valor to have a Vittorio Rigolo foundation in the future to help also musician hearts uh, in other fields and all the people that really are in need like Banksy did with the stone at the beginning with the treasure hunt we are coming out with a drop but we didn't want to corrupt the message of the beginning of the treasure hunt so actually Valart is giving the 50 percent 50 percent of whatever is making on the on this drop and you know how much work it is behind 50 percent all the income towards a benefit so so to to do actions that will do good so we'll give away 50 percent of it so nice. we also do good to give people the chance to invest in something different uh, or to enter this new era and, and keep a value but also to do something good to others nice. yeah um, and i just want to say because i know we got to close out i want to say thank you for 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 taking the initiative and doing this because it's a super cool concept and being being an entertainer being a collector like you you get what it feels like to have or to not have ownership over your work and to not be able to share it or make it accessible and i think what this era of technology is is affording us is the ability to give artists more control and to give value back to their art and i think that's really something special so thank you but thank you eddie thank you everybody i i hope that we're gonna have a future podcast together so we can talk uh why yeah you gotta come back after some drops uh, uh, to keep what you said right now i mean uh, what is the most beautiful things when you have a piece it's just not uh, only have it for you but uh, it's to share why we have peace in, in a museum why we have graded piece of art because we want people to go there and be able to see it because sharing is caring so if we keep it for ourselves uh, no good beautiful man thank you thank you for joining us today and uh, i hope to talk to you again soon thank you ciao ciao Ciao. All right. So that concludes the first episode of the Value Art Podcast. Like I've said several times on the episode, I'm super excited. And I hope that you are excited as well, because we're going to get into a lot of cool topics. We're going to meet a lot of cool people. And we're going to talk about a lot of very interesting pieces of art and uh, and culture and technology. So also, we're, we're building a little bit of a community outside the podcast. So you can contribute ideas for topics for guests. Um, feedback, criticism, love, uh, anything. Uh, we we want to hear it. We want to hear from you. So um, yeah, uh, I'm going to end it there. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. So ciao.